I talk about and I mention meditation very frequently here. And I find there's often a lot of confusion about meditation, what it's for. And especially between the spiritual and the religious, depending on which religion you are coming from. But it's also the same that the term God in religious terms versus the term oneness and God in spiritual terms they also have conflict and yet the only time I have known God, heard God, felt that presence, that overwhelming presence, it has always gone with an overwhelming sense of oneness with all that is, that we are all originating from the same place. Over the years, I've used meditation to remedy something in my human organism. And I have pointed at that something in my human organism with various different terms. I have said ego, lower self, carnality, flesh. Most recently, I've said alien slave technology. Now, We humans are peculiar because what matters if we slow down is what is a human pointing at with the particular words they are using. But we humans often, we argue about what words should be used to point at the artifact. <laughs> it doesn't change the artifact, it doesn't change the truth of that in reality. And we humans argue my way of pointing at it is correct and your way is wrong. And I think and I feel we do that because we don't know how to experience the artifact properly. We don't know how to access that which we are pointing at fully. And so we get very caught up in the importance of the words we are using to point at it with. Because it's the closest connection to the genuine experience of it. For instance, the presence of God. Many can't access the presence of God. They need it, but they can't. They weren't shown how. And so without that connectivity and oneness, they get hooked on the words they are using to point at God. And they argue and they fight. And so in this video, I am going to use the term alien slave technology to point at what I am referring to remedying with meditation in the human vessel. And I do so not from nothing. You know, I've, I think you all know I've had this experience which has changed me, where I had a conversation with what I perceive still to be an alien species. They operate in this realm from a higher dimension and they can operate much. If you look at how they operate, it fits into the modality of demon and possession. But I have dealt with angels, they have helped me in all that I've done. And I have addressed the demonic who have challenged me in all that I've done. And there was a difference here with this species that I spoke to, these beings. There was a difference energetically. And so after that experience, I use new eyes to see things. In the Old Testament of the Bible, for example, well, I think there's good argument to say that the God we are told to believe is God in the Old Testament is not God at all. This God demanded virgins and cattle. It demanded the spoils of war. This God uh, was completely different to the God that Jesus introduced us to. There are references to the Nephilim in the Old Testament, it's unexplained. There are stories of men taking off from the earth in chariots of fire that moved like a whirlwind until they could not be seen. It sounds a lot like a spaceship of some sort. And so I, 
I put that against the Sumerian texts which actually say we were created by an alien species and predates the Bible. And the Sumerian texts have Utnapishtim, for example. Uh, Utnapishtim is Noah, ultimately, and was written thousands of years before Noah was written. And so I'm using this terminology. But if this is not a terminology you can use, use or insert a different terminology. Insert ego if it works better. Insert that, it's, it's fine. We are pointing at the same thing. Now what I've noticed is that meditation is a way on the face of it to deprogram the slave technology, to deprogram the flesh. But on, a, on a, a deeper depth, it seems meditation may be a way to allow the flow of your essence. And your essence is an unconditional loving witness of awareness and attention. And when that flows, it silences. On its own, it silences the alien slave technology. What do I mean by alien slave technology? It's the mind that takes you away. Life is experienced in its whole, fullest form, in all its joy and contentment. When life is revealed to the senses, most humans can't do that. Most humans live in the past or the future or selfish ambition. And so the revelation of life, the arising of life, the gift of the revealing of life to the senses, which can only happen here and now. Life is only happening here and now. You may build a time machine. You can go back 50 years. When you get out of that time machine, as the man or woman you are right now, it will be now again. Only humans at that time have created different dates to mark that point in our story. But it is now. Metaphysically, in your consciousness, you only have now. Likewise, if you go to the future, when you get out of that machine, it's now again. And so the state of consciousness where life is revealed to you is a state of presence with as much attention as possible in that presence as you can offer. The technology is that which takes you away from that presence. When I experience a silencing of that technology, when the human vessel that I am awakens and arises in the presence of God, which I hope it does every day, but it doesn't stay there every day because I have technology in me that takes me away from it like you do. But whenever I am there, it goes hand in hand with an overwhelming sense of oneness. I feel that oneness now. I feel the unity now, my oneness and unity with all that is. Now let us not get confused that because we all come from the loving heart of God, that we are all acceptable. The gift of free will, which had to be infinite potential, infinite possibility, and free will had to be the ingredients to allow for existence to allow for consciousness and manifestation to have any meaning, to be a genuine, free chance of expression, not a simulation of God's decisions, of God's opinions, but a genuine, free expression of, of life. Let's not, because we arrive from there, get muddled up with the idea that every use of free will and therefore every manifestation within inside reality, within inside the universe even, because there are no doubt species far more advanced in my view than we are. 
species advanced enough to create this world even. False creator gods, we may call them. I have no doubt that exists. No doubt. Just because it's happening doesn't mean to say the mind of God agrees to it. Let's get that clear. I've made that clear in recent videos. But what I've noticed is, it's as if here is unity and oneness with God, right here. And you've got like a target, a bullseye. And we are living in this ring of experience that we call a dimension. And many go back to the oneness, which is connecting to the white light, the origin, the loving heart of creation, the unity consciousness. And they feel whole and full and full of love. And it's very tempting to linger and stay there forever, <laughs> forever, if you could. But that defeats the point of the gift of this ring of experience. This ring of experience matters. You matter or you wouldn't be here. You have worth, you have value. And so I recognize that the job is to go back to that unity and oneness and let it charge you, let it fill you, let it nourish you. And then when you come back to your ring of experience, the foundation of the activity of your intelligence will be one of more love and compassion. Because if you live only in the ring of experience, never moving your consciousness back to the bullseye, back to the oneness, if you live only there, your perceptions are fragmented and you are in a state of amnesia of your true nature. And this creates immense suffering for the individual and the creations of the individual can create immense suffering for others. I recognize it. Our job is to bring that to this ring of experience. If you give immense intelligence to a compassionate man, he will create compassion. Moving to that center will bring that compassion to any man. If you give intelligence to a wicked man, then that man undoubtedly will create wickedness. Wicked people live in the ring of experience and reject the unity consciousness. Wicked species, entities, they live in the ring of experience and they refuse to connect to the unity of all and the love and surrender that's there and instead persist on fighting with it and rejecting it in a hope to become it, to escape it. There is a saying, those who love don't ask questions. When you are at the point where in your life you're having an event which will be unforgettable, your child is being born, you finally succeed at building something you've always wanted to do, you're finally doing something you've always wanted to do, you are getting married, whatever it may be, making love to your, to your significant other. These events, when they are happening, for the vast majority of people, their attention is so focused on what is happening. Their beingness is so in that moment of what is happening that they would never ask the question, what is the meaning of life? They never will. Because in that moment when your child is born, you are so filled with the joy of what's happening that the meaning of life is self-explanatory in that moment. And here's the funny thing. You know it, but when you leave the experience of the child being born and you go home and you sit still, many of us can forget it. And it's when we are alone that the technology kicks in and the technology starts saying, what is the point in this? What's the meaning of this? Why is it like this? Why that? Why this? Or it even begins to bully you is another unfortunate element of it. You're no good. You're, no, you're worthless. When you're in a very joyous, open-hearted state of creation 
or receiving the joy of creation with a state of thanksgiving, you are not asking those questions. Your mind is stilled. Now the question is, in that moment, is it that the events in front of you are so potent that they jar the alien slave technology and your soul can finally come through in all its freedom? Because the human body must have a soul to be animated. The alien slave technology only works if you can trap the soul energy in the alien slave technology and drink from it, as it were, eat from it. It only works that way for these higher dimensional beings if there's a soul present. And so the gamble, the risk is that the soul will get free and overcome the technology. When we see our child born, the technology, for whatever reason, seems to get shut down. And in that time, the meaning of life is explained in the sheer thanksgiving of what is happening. Now, I would argue that this is the meaning of life. To find a way that all of your attention and your love and your, your anatomy can be here to receive the revealing of life as it occurs from the now. Not to wander into the past or the future, but to be here. Your brain free of mind, so that which life has arising for you, if a bird comes and flies and lands on the grass in front of me, that I can receive that event with thanksgiving, joy and love. But what if the event is not so potent as a bird landing on you? What if it's just a tree blowing in the wind? For most, we are so conditioned with the memories that are common that the technology doesn't let us see the wonder doesn't let us see the joy of the meaning of that. And so meditation is a way to deprogram that technology because meditation is a way to bring all of your attention and your awareness into the revealing of life in the moment. You see, when you come into the revealing of life in the moment, all the questions that you are asking with the alien slave technology, those answers exist with you. The alien slave technology takes you out of the frequency whereby the revealing of life is happening to your senses because it's clogging up your senses with the story of who you are and all of its vulnerabilities. Therefore, when life is revealed to you, you can't see it because you're busy trying to analyze it. What does that mean? I don't understand. What's the, what's the point in this? What's the reason for this? And the technology can't. It can't do it. And it sets humans off on this mad journey. And it, so, it makes you suffer. Now, if all of a sudden the technology goes away, and you are sitting here and life is being revealed to you, the peculiar element of the metaphysics of this, I feel, is that the questions that the technology would have asked, they are answered from the connection to that frequency of presence, the presence of God. The wisdom, the knowing is born from that awakened state, which is the state of the human organism free of that slave technology. The slave technology takes you away from the space whereby which you know the answers. And then it starts asking you questions about the answers that you already knew. As the slave technology takes you away from the space where you already know the answers, and then starts to ask questions, what this does is it creates an image inside you of a seeker. And now you must seek to know the answers to these things. 
And of course, the engagement of the seeker is the engagement of the slave technology. And the engagement of the slave technology in that way takes you further and further away from the stillness, which is where the answers, the presence, the knowledge, the wisdom arises. And it, it, it's not that you can't learn from another. It's not that there aren't still books and things. It's that that flow of energy, which controls the sprouting of the grass and the flowering and blossoming of the trees that is knitting you together in your mum's womb. That flow of energy now takes your individual organism to where it needs to be at any particular time. Because you're moving from a deeper sense of oneness and unity and not from the ring of experience, all amnesic, wondering what's going on, who am I, how do I even guide my own life here? Meditation is deprogramming it. Meditation takes you back to the unity consciousness, back to God. For God is oneness, oneness is God. It takes you back there. And it creates a foundation within you where the seeker can't manifest. The seeker can't manifest because the questions are gone. The questions are gone because the answers are only revealed when the questioner is gone. And so the falling away of the technology and the structures that it's built in this world is what we are passing through. It is this time where the Christ returns. As Yeshua said, for his return, let me remember, when you go into the city, look for the man with the pitcher of water and follow him into the upper room. Look for the man with the pitcher of water is the age of Aquarius. Now is the time, cosmically in our age, where the falling away of our former oppressions, if this is what caused this within us, the falling away of all that is not the purity of, of the love of oneness, the falling away of that begins now. And perhaps one million, ten million years from now, we will be a species so advanced that we go back to other dimensions as the angels do to ours, to bring other amnesic species out of the trap of the technology that these beings have put in them. Meditation deprograms the technology. The technology blocks your attention from the moment and in doing so takes away the answers to the questions of life and in doing so creates the need to ask the questions for life and in asking those questions creates the need to create the image of a seeker and in beginning seeking you engage the technology and so you get caught in a merry-go-round because the seeker cannot find. The knowing requires no seeking and the seeking has no knowing. The arising of the presence of God that is with you always, it is beneath the technology and it is a state you can access and you can rewire yourself. So as the same love and joy that you feel when your child is born, so you're not asking any questions, is felt when you look at the leaves blowing on the tree. And so you ask no questions because you have altered your state of being. The world no longer can make you a victim. You become powerful and potent because you give thanks, you give thanks, you give thanks. thanks. 
When you do that, you shut off the technology. When you do that, you become present. And when you become present, here now, your senses lit up by the moment, having life revealed to you, not you beating it into submission, but your senses having life revealed to you, and watching it and in all its wonder, not controlling it. There's such immense freedom there. Because God's there. Just sit today, 20 minutes. Let the sound you hear play with your eardrums. Don't label it or organize it. Just be still and know that I am God. Do it. Even if you're sitting in your office or your bedroom or your living room, Listen to that calm silence. Let that calm silence play with your eardrums. Let the buzz of your laptop play with your eardrums. It doesn't have to be bird song. It can be an aeroplane flying over. It can be anything. It can be your kids playing. Just let it play with your eardrums. You'll enter that state. Because you'll access your true nature of love. And that love will silence the technology. Oneness will be known. Not intellectually, but known. And there God is known. No words needed to point at it. It's known. <sighs> okay. That was all. I love you all. God bless, guys. Bye. Love you, no. That thanks to the love, support and sharing of the community that has followed us here on YouTube, we have been able to build a village for special needs children in crisis out in Tanzania. Our family in Tanzania is now made up of nearly 200 children. Most of these children have disabilities and most of these children are among the most marginalised human beings in our human story. You have seen the suffering on this channel, I won't go over it, but these children had no access to housing, medical care, some were abandoned and they certainly didn't get quality care, some of them. It is only thanks to the love, support and the partnership of persons in this community that we have been able to make this family a reality, that we have been able to bring these children out of the dark and into the light where they belong. To all who have partnered with what we do, thank you for your love and support. We simply can't do what we do without you. If you are not involved in our family and you are interested in helping us to eradicate this problem that we face inside the human story, eradicate this problem that these children are facing and don't need to face, then we have launched a new partnership program. If you visit www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership, you will see all of the details there. Ultimately, these partnerships help us to sustain our family, to provide everything we need to these children to make sure they are happy. And in return with that, we will provide you with regular updates and a newsletter every month as well. So as you can see exactly how your act of love and sharing is impacting the world and the lives of these children in the same way that I get to see it.